Hey everyone, this is Maylise again. Obviously in the last video I talked a lot about um, kind of like my path through uh, undergrad and how I got to my PhD program right now, but I just wanted to give you kind of the short and sweet version for anyone that doesn't have, you know, that much time to be spending listening to me talk about my life. So um, the short and sweet for like, what are some tips that I can give you for how to overcome that low undergrad GPA and still apply to PhD programs. The first tip I always give people is don't be afraid to take time off. Um, take time off to, you know, work relevant positions. If you're in STEM, you know, maybe it's working in a research lab for one or several years. Um, you can gain amazing opportunities and skills that way. You can add that to your CV or resume. And in that process, you can probably gain one or several letters of recommendation that you're going to need. You're going to need at least three um, letters of recommendation. Because I had a low GPA, I had five letters of recommendation. Um, so that is just can only help you um, and also gives you time to breathe after undergrad so you're not just like struggling in your last semester or last year to get together all these things like the money for your applications um, you know the time to apply and take the GRE stuff like that and give yourself time to really research the programs that you want to get into I think taking time off is fabulous and fantastic and I couldn't advocate for it enough um, the second thing that I second piece of advice that I give is explore taking online classes or community college classes especially if you have like maybe a prerequisite that you need or you um you know are trying to bump up that gpa before you apply make sure that they're like accredited and that you're you know it can actually um count towards either you know your gpa or maybe help um so that you don't have to take a certain type of class in your first year of grad school but that might be something to explore um you know community college classes you can take them in the evening sometimes with your full-time work schedule so that's like something that could be helpful to either gain the relevant kind of background experience or knowledge or bump up your gpa one of the most important things i think is being able to make um connection with somebody at the university you're applying to so if that's an advisor um that you're really interested in working with reach out to them via email you know months before you're applying and say hey you know i'm are you taking grad students i'm really interested in your lab and i'm hoping we can schedule some time to talk here's my cv um i look forward to hearing from you Keep it short, keep it sweet. You, these advisors are extremely busy. Um, you don't need to say it to have a novel. Your CV should speaks for itself. But you know, inquire about whether or not they're taking students, and and you know maybe share something that like, oh, I read this paper that you wrote. That's that really interests me because of X Y Z. Looking forward to hearing from you. Like, share that you're interested. Share that you've done your your research, but don't write a novel. Um, I think it's in crucial to kind of establish that connection and um, talk with them on the phone or on, via Skype and kind of exp express like why you are such a great fit for their lab. You know, how does this match your interests? Um, do you have ideas already to contribute to this lab and ideas for kind of how you see your PhD unfolding? Um, and again, this comes kind of with the first point, which is you need kind of time to establish like what your interests are and, and where you kind of see things going if you um, like many of us, don't have time to fully explore that in undergrad because you're working, juggling jobs, etc. Um, let's see, the last piece of advice I will give, um, yeah, I think it's just having confidence in yourself and that also can kind of come with time sometimes, like being able to put yourself in these kind of fearful, fearful positions where you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this research associate job, oh look, I did it and it was fine. Um, you know, I worked from being like an animal tech to a lab manager and each time I thought, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this experience. And then you do it and you're like, I can definitely do all these things. I don't know why I was so lacking confidence in the first place. Right. But it's true. We do. And it's hard to, to manage that and to get over that or to um, I don't think you ever I mean, for me, I don't think I ever really get over a lack of confidence. It's just like I know how to manage it a little bit better with time. So um you know, having having faith in yourself, having faith in the process, um, having confidence in yourself is essential. Um, definitely having a mentor is essential and, and really important. So, you know, if you have time and if you're looking for somebody that can um, potentially be um, a motivator or guide you in that process, definitely feel free to reach out to Muse Mentorship. It's uh, M-U-S-E mentorship.com or you can follow us on Twitter at Muse Mentorship. 
and on Instagram at Muse Mentorship. So thanks for following along. I hope this is helpful and that I hope you just know how many people there are like me who struggled in undergrad but still came out on top. Um, you know, like I said, 2.82 undergrad GPA, um, 3.75 uh, graduate GPA, and um, you know, I've had a, a fantastic year. I've won several awards, including an early career award. Your undergrad GPA does not is not a marker of your intelligence or capability. There is so much growth that you can do, so much that you can do to develop as a person and change your study habits, kind of change, you know, a lot of different things and come out on top. You know, we all believe in you and there's so many of us who kind of share that path. So don't be afraid to reach out. Um, we are here for you. Okay, talk to you later.